Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank Sages uh, for the opportunity to present our work today, Dr. Mahakami and Dr. Lipinska for uh, moderating our session. Um, today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about our experience with uh, tepping and hernia repair and uh, long-term patterns and predictors of pain uh, as a part of a patient-centered analysis. Um, the authors have no relevant disclosures. So as we've heard through the other um, talkers, inguinal hernia repair is obviously the uh, most common um, general surgical procedure performed worldwide. Uh, several studies have shown in experienced hands uh, the proven benefits over traditional open techniques um, with reduced post-operative pain being one of them. Uh, over the last decade or so, with inguinal uh, recurrence rates being uh, relatively low, there's been a shift in how we're defining successful outcomes uh, with the new focus being on patient reported quality of life. There are various uh, types of tools available <clears throat> and however defined, the risk of experience long-term or chronic pain may affect a patient's decision making uh, when deciding to undergo a uh, elective procedure. Uh, so we aim to identify the patterns and potential predictors of pain up to two years following laparoscopic, totally extra peritoneal uh, hernia repair using both a generic and specific quality of life instruments. <clears throat> um, this was a review of uh, prospectively maintained beta database, uh, like I said, for all patients who underwent a TEP repair from June 2009 to December 2015. Um, four surgeons uh, actively enrolled patients across four hospitals with the uh, support of research staff. Um, patients were <clears throat> included um, if they were greater than 18 years old and had responded to a quality of life survey. Uh, they were excluded if they underwent a uh, transabdominal or TAP approach or had a concomitant procedure during the case, same case. So the three quality of life measures that we used, <clears throat> um, SF36 I think is probably the most well known. It's a very generic and comprehensive uh, tool used to assess the functional outcomes um, based on uh, patients with chronic medical conditions. <clears throat> we focused on two of the domains that contain uh, questions regarding their pain that are listed there. Um, the surgical outcomes measurement system is a relatively new measurement tool, um, <clears throat> similar to S uh, SF36 in that it's comprehensive, but more focused towards the surgical patient, um, um, not any specific type of procedure. So the Carolina's Comfort Scale um, is a validated specific uh, assessment tool to inguinal hernia repair. <clears throat> so we define significant pain as mild um, but bothersome or worse on either of the specific instruments <clears throat> with SOM scores greater than three and four and CCS scores greater than two. <clears throat> uh, we collected preoperative, operative details included mesh type use of tax complications, uh, postoperative outcomes uh, including recurrence and uh, documentation of uh, narcotic pain medication return to daily activities. <clears throat> in terms of uh, uh, looking at the responses, uh, logistic regression was used to determine univariate predictors on the other elements involved in the three um, instruments, and a multivariate model was used to um, predict potential uh, variables uh, in terms of the patient and procedure related variables. <clears throat> so uh, in all, 482 patients met criteria and underwent 626 repairs. The average age uh, was 56 uh, relatively healthy males, uh, the majority of patients. We included both primary and uh, repair of recurrent hernias in this group. <clears throat> and you can see a baseline, <clears throat> there's about 21% of patients who were asymptomatic. Average uh, VAS pre-op score was 2.4. <clears throat> So all cases are done in a general anesthesia, <clears throat> um, the, typically around 40 minutes. Uh, in all cases, uh, one of three macroporous types of mesh are placed, listed here, as well as two sizes, which we looked at, the majority of which are 15 by 10. Um, TAC was used to secure the mesh in 53% of the patients <clears throat> with either absorbable or permanent um, TAC material. Uh, balloon device, again, was used in about 22% of the cases. In total, there were 21 complications um, with a rate of 4.4. The majority of these were uh, minor to moderate size peritoneal defects, <coughs> which were addressed intraoperatively 
um, without requiring any uh, conversion to open. There was one case that required conversion to a tap and uh, one case each of a vascular bladder and bowel injury. <clears throat> uh, patients are typically given um, IV Ketorolac uh, if they don't have any contraindications to NSAIDs prior to emergence and extubation. Um, <clears throat> the table next, what we, uh, sorry, and discharged uh, home the same day, the average length of hospital stays about six hours. So 30-day events, um, <clears throat> you can see the typically patients uh, stop using narcotic pain meds on post-op day one, return to work on post-op day, uh, sorry, activities of daily living on post-op day four, and return to work if employed. Sorry, it's not listed, it's about the same, about five days. <clears throat> uh, in terms of surgical site occurrences, the most common complications for this uh, is a seroma, which has been previously described as uh, being common to the TEP approach. Uh, we also had some hematoma, and urinary retention was 7.6%. <clears throat> hernia recurrence, there were 12 cases of uh, hernia recurrence in 10 patients <clears throat> over a mean of uh, 13 months. Um, so here you can see the responses from each of the uh, quality of life instruments. We uh, looked at correlation of across the SOMS and SF36 pain scores uh, against the CCS pain score, and you can see that there was a stronger correlation between uh, the SOMS as opposed to SF36. Um, SOMS correlated pretty well all the way to two years. <coughs> So I'm just gonna go through a few of these quickly. Uh, they represent general similar trends in whichever one that we've seen. Uh, SF36 pain scores, you see that there's an initial uh, worsening of pain at three weeks and it continues to significantly improve from six months and it stays so uh, up until two years. <clears throat> uh, CCS scores represent a very similar findings. Um, you can see from three weeks to two years, there's a significant improvement with an initial, <clears throat> excuse me, so in terms of the SOMS and uh, the box area represents what we define as a significant pain. <clears throat> and you can see that um, the majority about, when you break it down, uh, there's about 25% who actually have significant pain. <clears throat> so when we looked at CCS, more specific instrument, and you can see for all their pain questions, there was significant improvement um, for all relative questions from three years to two years postoperatively. So in terms of significant pain on the two more specific quality of life instruments, you can see that patients are reporting significant pain uh, in 25% of the cases, which represents about 120 patients in our cohort. So looking back, we went back and compared. Uh, there were no significant differences in terms of their demographics or baseline hernia characteristics. Um, but when, um, when we ran our predictive model, <clears throat> you can see um, the, other, the, the other domains on the quality of life instruments were only included in univariate analysis due to multicollinearity, but what uh, did stand out was, again, what has been shown is age less than 55. Previous surgery, um, which included a lower abdominal or pelvic procedures <clears throat> and intraoperative complications were um, correlated with significant pain at two years. So in conclusion, uh, I think, you know, our series shows very similar to what uh, other high volume experience centers have shown in low recurrence. So, um, the rates of severe or disabling chronic pain are relatively low. However, um, with the use of multiple quality of life instruments, <clears throat> um, it's important to be able to let patients know that uh, they should be able to ex they'll expect mild to moderate levels of pain. However, this will get better and stay as such by six months to two years. Um, only a small proportion of them will go on to have severe disabling pain. Um, we can better educate and um, uh, educate the patients preoperatively, and if uh, there are some who are found to have low quality of life or potential risk factors, um, preemptively have discussions with potential um, pain control options. Thank you.